fever in the morning, fever all through the night. It's Sunday morning on CBS, and here again is Lee Cowan. She was the legendary singer-songwriter who became one of the biggest stars of the 50s and 60s. Mo Rocca remembers Miss Peggy Lee, one of our Sunday best. And I stood there, shivering in my pajamas, watched the whole world go up in flames. And when it was all over, I said to myself, is that all there is to a fire? In 1970, Peggy Lee won a Grammy for Is That All There Is? Is that all there is? A song that many heard as an anthem of ennui, but not Lee. She saw it as absolutely life-affirming and hopeful that bad things are going to happen and that you can rise above them. Let's break out the boo. Stand back and have a ball. Holly Foster Wells is Peggy Lee's granddaughter. Celebrate life in spite of, of all of this that's happening. That's the way my love is like the sun that shines above us. And Peggy Lee had a lot to celebrate. At 50, she was already a legend, an artist of astonishing versatility. Black coffee. A master of cool. Then was then. A heartbreaker. And now is now. Cause I'm a woman. W -O -M -A. And a trailblazer. Musically, how many different Peggy Lees oh, were there? God. <laughs> Dozens. Watch that fringe and see how it flutters. There's Latin. Sugar. There's blues. Things are swinging. There's jazz. Pass me by. There's pop. Peter Richmond wrote a biography of Lee. Oh, you want me to do the folks who live on the hill? So you'll weep? I can do that. You want me to do black coffee? So you think it's like, oh, I'm hanging out with junkies at a kitchen table? I can do that. And all of those Peggy Lees can be traced back to the desolate plains of North Dakota. And that wind, it's like a rumbling. It's powerful. Feels like it could blow this house down and the girl then named Norma Dolores Eggstrom. Here in the tiny town of Wimbledon, in what's now the Peggy Lee Museum, Norma spent her high school years. Her mother had died when she was just four. Her father, the town's railroad depot manager, was an alcoholic. And he really at times couldn't run the depot, so she would have to take over for him. Worse still, her father remarried a woman who was physically abusive. Lee later wrote that her stepmother once beat her over the head with a cast iron skillet. And my grandmother, she said she would look out at the railroad tracks and just imagine where they led. It was a way out. That's what the railroad represented to her. And of course, her other way out was music. Waiting for the train to come in. By 17, she was singing on the radio as Peggy Lee. And before long, you had plenty money, 1922. touring with you Benny Goodman's band, often the only woman on the bus. And she said that these men always looked out for her. People took her under their wing. She had that quality where you wanted to protect her. I'm going to be a shady lady bird. By now, she'd cultivated a style that was as minimalist as the landscape she'd grown up in. Cool, but never cold. You wouldn't be a wonder now from door to door. Why don't you do right? She had the philosophy of less is more. And she would bring you in. Like, you had to pay attention. And so for the rest of her life, she knew that the more she could get the room silent, the more she's got them. She said the challenge is to leave out all but the essentials, keeping it right there, minimal. You get me in a spin, oh, what a stew I'm in, cause I don't know enough about you. It was while touring with Benny Goodman that she met guitarist Dave Barber. They married in 1943. 
And they had such chemistry together. That was the love of her life, my grandfather. But Barbara, like her father, had a drinking problem, one that only got worse as Lee got bigger. And the marriage ended in 1951. A woman alone. And it broke her heart. But just as she always has done, it fueled her music. Don't cry. There'll be another spring. The 1950s were Lee's most prolific and innovative period. A rarity among women at the time, she was a singer-songwriter with 270 songs to her name. As a kid, was it really cool for you that your grandmother was part of Lady and the Tramp? That's how my friends knew of her. He's a tramp, but they love him. She co-wrote the score to the Disney classic. She's the voice of the Siamese cats. She's Darling, the mother. Fluffy sleeper. Hiya, handsome. Come to join the party. She's Peg in the dog pound. Never know how much I love you. Never know how much I care. And in 1958, Lee had her biggest hit with Fever, with an arrangement all her own. Just bass, drums, and finger snaps. Fever when you hold me tight. Fever. She's keeping so much in. If this is the only thing to signal what you're singing about, that's powerful. But to see Peggy Lee live was to be spellbound. See, see, Ryder, see what you have done. There's a tape of her singing C.C. Ryder. Oh, yeah. And it's hypnotic. I know exactly what performance that is at Basin Street East. And she barely moves. Like she just moves a little shoulder and just her face, and it's so sexy. And this was the living room. It was inevitable that Peggy Lee would achieve icon status. She kind of came up with that bob and the glasses. And then it's funny because then I saw Gwen Stefani doing the same thing. So. Probably not a coincidence. No. She inspired the Muppets character, Miss Piggy, originally named Miss Piggy Lee. She thought that was fantastic. I mean, that pig is glamorous. Miss Piggy is the paragon of glamour. Right. And she's a diva, and my grandma was a diva. So. Yes, it's a good day. And her life was glamorous. She recorded these home movies of parties at her Bel Air estate. But one song spoke to her greatest unfulfilled wish. Someday we'll build a home on a hilltop high. The folks who live on the hill, that's her very favorite song. And I think it just paints this picture of an idyllic relationship and growing old together and always having that soulmate by your side. The folks who live on the hill. After Dave Barber, Lee married and divorced three more times before she died in 2002. And do you think she was ultimately happy? That is a really complicated question. I think she had incredible moments of happiness, but interspersed with incredible loss, heartbreak, disappointment, fear. And where do you think the fear came from? She said, actually, it came from growing up without what really, what she felt was a home. And then one day he went away, and I thought I'd die, but I didn't but she wouldn't have been Peggy Lee without this heartache and this pain. And that is what resonates with people is that truth. Let's break out the booze. She would say to me, this music is going to outlive me. She knew. She knew. If that's all there is.